Hello my fellow gamers and welcome to the fifth and final round for Group B and this is going to be a ridiculously exciting round because everyone that has played has got something to play for. That any win, any loss will greatly influence the entire table and who gets through to the knockout stage, the semi-finals. So in our first battle we have got Pharaoh of War of his Chaos against Psyche and his High Elves. And interestingly enough, he's gone, Feral War's gone for Archeon, the never chosen, sorry, ever chosen. On his horse there, we've got a Dragon Ogre, Ogre Segov. We've got one, two units of Forsaken. We've also got some Aspiring Champions. Chaos Warriors, one, two, three units Chaos Warriors with great weapons. We then got a unit of Chaos Mordors, some Forsaken. And there's heavy hitters in the flank here, the Chaos Knights and the Chaos Warhounds with Poison. What a psych brought on to this tournament. So, he's brought here in this battle two units of chariots. He's got a front line of white lines. Very strong front line right there. And he's got two units of spearmen for any flanking forces. Three units of Phoenix Guard. And Tyrion holding the centre. On his horse there. So this is, as you know, Chaos and High Elves. It is a classic lineup. And it is all to play for. Psyche is currently at the bottom of the league. And cannot get through to the semi-finals. But this would give him a point on the scoreboard. So he is playing for honour here. Well, Feral War is currently in second place. But if he loses in this one, it could make it easier for the other players to push him down into third place place so feral war really wants to win this one to make sure he stays in the top two and psych wants to win this for glory so go to full speed as the chaos hordes are all coming out of the woods and psych has already made a slight mistake where he's angled his whole army against these guys and these guys are all on the flank so they're having to quickly reorganize the line and these two are going to make the most out of it and charge straight into this unprepared group and he missed he swung and he missed what happened? Pharaoh, what happened? There you go, he's now getting involved, but the Phoenix Guard will cut this guy up really, really good. Um, but this formation has completely kind of disappeared now. The chariots are trying to support. But as you can see, this 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 is some quick thinking on um, Sykes' part because he's having to reorganise his line as quickly as he can. The Phoenix Guard have clashed against the Aspiring Champions. As you can see, these guys are now trying to hold the flank here. Um, but we do have a spell going down. What have we got coming down? Oh, it's the burning skull straight down his line. Though it didn't seem to do all that much damage, which is good. But his heavy hitters then from the flank have not yet joined in. The Forsaken are joining in. Oh, it's carried on all the way through as well. Flip it. That's a big spell. So there they've charged in, but the Spearmen will come in and they will be good against that. And the Phoenix Guard will help against the Chaos Knights. Um, where's Archeon and all this? Well, Tyrion is charge straight in the middle the phoenix guard are charging into this um and we've already got some chaos the aspiring champions have broke well they're shaken they've actually caused them to shake because of amount of damage and you got uh and the knights are now chasing off the chariots there's archeon there's the dragon ogre there's the chaos warhounds there Ch chasing after those chariots the dragon ogre is jumping in there but there's so much phoenix guard he's gonna have a hard time and the white lines are no joke either as you can see there seems to be um as you can see, we'll do this so you can see clearly. Look, there's lines of Chaos and High Elves all mixed up here. But you can see here, it's looking in the High Elves' favour. Because the, those Knights and the Wolves went after the Chariot, which is good for Psyche. Because now he can focus on these Forsaken, win this um, flank and move into the position here. The Chaos Knights have just charged straight into the centre. And you got, oh, what a line-up. Look at this. Archeon. And Tyrion battling it out and all this chaos and madness of battle. Oh, and the Dragon Ogre wants to join in. So Tyrion is now trying to get out of there because of that. But we do have the Chaos Mordors starting to break. That's not really a surprise. Looks like the Chariots are going to make a rear charge in. The Wolves are trying to stop them. Some of the Knights turn around. and they can't. But the Chariots have all come back. And this is looking like a real mess here. The Forsaken are now being broken. Um, we've got three Aspiring Champions that stood to one side. Um, these white lines have gone, but as I said, look, he's won this flank, and suddenly these Phoenix Guard and these Spearmen are now able to get in there, get behind, and cause all sorts of problems. And these chariots 
breaking up the night as you can see. Tyrion is taken on the Ever Chosen and the Dragon Ogre, but there is Phoenix Guard nearby, so that should help. Um, the white lines there are wavering, so are the Chaos Marauders. But yeah, look, the Chaos Knights are breaking off, so now they're getting into a better flanking position. And how is the, the balance of power is pretty much equal. It's 265 Chaos against 450 Elves. And let's not forget, these Elves are White Lines and Phoenix Guard. And the Chariots are actually getting into melee now, which is fantastic to see. They would do a lot of devastation. And as soon as they pull off, the Spearmen then charge in. So this will be doing Chaos to the Chaos Morale. Um, and you see these white lines are now coming in. The wolves are going to try and help, but you see the, this flank's going. This flank's going, and so is this. The knights are trying to take them out. Ooh, that was a cheap shot, trying to get Tyrion down with that fireball there. But you can see, it looks like the force of the chaos are actually starting to break, and the white lines are coming back. There's some guys here that are trying to get back in. Um, that's a chariot that's just rallied right on the edge of the map. But look, the centre, the centre belongs to the high elves. Could it be the psych? Could pit Pharaoh down here and own this battlefield? You've got the Chaos Knights, but where they've stopped, and you've got Spearmen in this mix and Phoenix Guard, they will not last long. Same for the Dragon Ogre, and the fact that um, Archeon is on a horse will could be his downside. Tyrion is doing this beautiful path and trying to keep away from this. His men can do the fine for him, but he has to... The oh, he's charging back in now. He's charging straight in there. Straight at Archeon then, doing a nice little bit of damage there. As you see, he is... Oh, oh, I believe this would be a flaming skull. Yes, it is. Straight... And look, it immediately breaks those guys. It's broken those guys. It's going to... Oh, that was... Feral War, that was dirty, and I love it. That was absolutely brilliant. The spearmen have broken as well. This, that's the sort of thing you need, is a spell like that to just really shatter the enemy. Um, suddenly, it's not looking so good for Psych Online Gaming. Now, a lot of his guys have broken, but the Phoenix Guard, of course, don't care for fire. They're Phoenix eggs, so that's not a problem. As you can see, you've got the chariots there trying to support. The Warhounds are back again. These guys are coming in. Um, got a stand your ground going on Tyrion to keep his guys in the fight and a lot of them are rallying and going back in the fence got with them but these guys I believe he causes fear and he causes fear and terror but units are rallying they're all coming back so though it was a really oh oh Tyrion that was a hell of a hit you just took there from the dragon ogre this is not looking good and he has began to waver I think he might be out of the camp there's only 500 health left it is not looking good for Tyrion and the chaos forces are running but look at all the bodies on this field they have been far these guys are determined to win this either way Phoenix Spearmen are moving back in the Phoenix Guard as you can imagine are fighting to the end We've still got three minutes in this battle left, and it is, as I said, this round is going to be insane. I think it's going to be one of the best episodes of the series, in my opinion, because everyone has got something to play for. Psyche is playing for honour and glory, and Feral War is playing to keep himself in second place in this tournament. If he, drop, if he drops to third place, then he is out of the running, and Dalv plays, and John Tornet will be in. So, as you can see, the... Phoenix Guard are doing good though. Their leadership will keep them in the fight. The Spearmen are starting to break. But the Phoenix Guard, even their leadership is starting to waver. But so are the Warriors of Chaos, which is not good. And what's that? Cascade and Fire Cloak. So he's just got melee defense and armor piercing damage. And that's made the Phoenix Guard begin to save because now he can just cleave through them. Very, very painful. Tyrion is kind of hanging around, loses leadership to try and keep the guys in the fight. As you can see, we've got, oh, we've got another 35 white lines charging in here. They're tired, but they could make the difference. I can make Chaos break. Dragon Ogre jumps in there, and so does Archeon. And you've got all these guys coming back. The Hellbirds, the Spearmen are all coming back in. So, the um, High Elves have 200 compared to the Chaos 665 they've got left. But look, they're all breaking. They are breaking, and it's just a Dragon Ogre and Archeon left. Is there anything else for Chaos to draw on? I don't think there is. Is there a group over here? No, they're all hidden over there. I think this could be it. Could it be Psyche gets the win with the High Elves and destroys? He's... Feral War is actually running away. And look at all this that is chasing them. These are a lot of very angry Elves. All blooded, tired, and can see victory for them and their general to get that score point on the scoreboard and bring it back for them. Feral War is clearly waiting for guys to battle, but they're not going to come back. Even if the... 
stand or die. They'd rather die than stay here, which just doesn't... So, Feral War has charged back in. We've got some Aspiring Champions coming back, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Look at this beautiful hit. They can at least make it worth it. They could still break the Hayabs if they both cause fear. The Dragon Ogre causes terror. But this is a lot of Spearmen and Phoenix Guard, and they're Tyrion. <laughs> <laughs> around the outside to keep away from Archeon because Tyrion, if Tyrion falls, the High Elves are out. Based on, look at their leadership, it's low as it is. If they fall, if Tyrion, but this is some beautiful micromanagement, keeping Tyrion in the group here so the High Elves can keep their leadership. We've got a Cascading Fire Cloak again on the Dragon Ogre. Oh, he charged into the Archeon there to try and do, but the High Elves look like they are breaking. Their wave of spearmen are broken, the white lines are breaking, but the Phoenix Guard, oh, yeah, the three units of Phoenix Guard are all that's left, but it could be all Psyche needs to beat these guys. He, they are both exhausted in this right, and they're surrounded by Phoenix Guard. Look at their leadership. They could break, it looks like they might be, or was he just dropped, stand your ground. Look at that, and their leadership, boop, beats back up, fantastic. And some of the spearmen are coming back, but the damage these guys are doing, I mean, the Dragon Ogre got 900 health. I think they've got, yeah, 900 health each, and that's going to drop so fast with these Phoenix Guard. Oh, the Dragon Ogre, he's wavering, he's had enough. He's doing a Foe Seeker to try and get... Oh, Tyrion is charging in there to try and take the Dragon Ogre out, and he has, he's broke... And what a way for Psyche to finish the tournament. He has won against Feral War, and it's chaos. The High Elves have a victory on the scoreboard. Well... Well, damn play. That was brilliant. Where was that play in the rest of the tournament, Psych? Really needed that earlier on, but you got the win, and that has put um, Feral War in a very precarious position. Um, he's going to have to wait and see exactly how the get next battle goes, and that would decide it all. So, Psych Online, Tyrion got 25 kills, but he made his points up just by keeping his forces in the battle. And he did a great job there. Spearman, 16 and 20 kills. The White Lines, 55, 24, 33 and 20. Um, the Phoenix Guard, as you can imagine, 78, 83 and 100. They were definitely... They won the game. They were the backbone of the fighting. They wouldn't break. They killed the most units. And then they finished off the enemy. And the Chariots, 20 and 31 kills. And they did a great job keeping Feral Wars, Cavalry and Wolves in that busy in the back line. So he could win the encounter in the front line. So, great job there. Archon, the Ever Chosen, got 113 kills. The Forsaken, again, hit and miss, got 15, 49, and very respectable 63. Chaos Warriors, 39, 27, and 60. Chaos Mortals, bit of a shame. I suspect they were just thrown in because he didn't have enough points for the better stuff, but only got 17 kills. Dragon Ogre, actually, imagine, with 127, was there to the end. Chaos Knights got a respectable 43. Unfortunately, the Spine Champions only got 7, and the Wolves only got 9. So there we go. Psyche, though he is at the bottom of the table still, has got a win. Well done, Psyche. Well played to the both of you. We will now jump over to the final game of Group B. And this will be the decider, ladies and gentlemen, bef between Pharaoh War, Dalv Plays, and John Torn to see he will be first, second, and third. And don't forget, second place, it's only the top two. So first and second place count. Third place, you don't get through. Doesn't matter. It is all to play for. So stay tuned for that. So here we go. The final battle for Group B in the YouTubers Mortal Empires tournament will be against Dove Plays with his Skaven versus John Torn and his Empire. As you know, the rules, it will be on the same map as the previous battle because we wanted it all equal and fair. So what's the Skaven got? Well, it's Getting through a couple units of gutter runners at the front here. We've got the Skaven Slave Spears on either flank there. We've got some Skaven Slave Slingers. One, two, three, four units of... Um, hang on, that's not Plague Monks. Ah, my apologies. There's two units of Plague Monks and two units of Death Runners mixed in there. No wonder I couldn't see them. They're all stealthy and ninja-like. So we also have a Warlock Engineer. We have some Poison Wing Gombardiers. Two units of them, as you can see the lightning, warp lightning cannons firing, Skaven slaves at the back, two units of rat ogres, live the warlord on a bone breaker, and some slaves just to round it out at the back. So that is Delph Play's army. Now look at John Torns. Oh look at this shot, look at this shot. They all missed. Good job. Well it says he's under attack, so he must have taken some damage. But we've got Volkmar the Grim on his fancy chariot. 
as well as Knights of the Blazing Sun. He's also got a front line of one, two, three units of swordsmen. We then got flagellants, tattered souls, another group of flagellants there, another group there, and the Sigma Sons at the back. On this flank, you also got the Knights of the Blazing Sun. Don't want to miss them out. We got some free company militia, two units of them. We've also got a lot bright wizard for some good fire magic, the silver bullets, and some spearmen at the back to protect them. Very good army. And the thing is, of this battlefield, it has to be said. Yes, you can have some flanking elements to surprise them, but for the most part, you're in the open while these, this side gets to reveal their forces as they march out. So, let's get this to normal speed. It's a five-minute battle. It's going to be tense. And the numbers are 1,080 Empire to 1,361 Skaven. So, as you can see, they're all coming out of the woods now. And here comes the Blazing Sun. They'll probably be out of catch loads as well. And these guys are flanking around... And Dalv plays is moving his Lord and his Rat Ogres into position to deal with this flanking force here. These guys are getting some good hits on them there. And I believe they have the net as well. Yes, they do. So they can actually slow cavalry right down. Just by being nearby, they can slow them down. These, the main army is actually just ignoring them and going straight for the center. That's probably the best thing to do. You're never going to cast these guys. There's no point even trying. Um, the handgun is getting themselves into position here. Um, the Rat Ogres are bursting out of the woods, which is probably not a very nice surprise if um, John Torm didn't realise they were coming. But he must have done, because there was forces coming here to counter it with all this infantry. So John Dalf plays, is putting his guys back, holding into the woods. The Slingers are getting some nice bits of damage. I mean, look, those swordsmen have been peppered really, really badly. There's a nice shot there, but unfortunately it's not a great angle for the Warp Line and Cannons to get good shots in. Here we go, the battle's about to begin on this fight. The Flagellants and the Swordsmen taking on the Rat Ogres, the Scaven Slaves and the Lord there. Um, but these Swordsmen, Sigmar's Sons, are charging in there. The Flagellants are changing into the Scaven Slaves, which no one's really bothered about. And in they come, the Plague Monks and the Death Runners are charging straight in there. Look at them go. They're going to cough through those lines. Poison Wing Gobbadiers are trying to support, but I wonder if they're killing more of their own men than the enemy. You do have to ask yourself that. And we do have some slaves against Flagellants. We all know he's going to break there first. These Swordsmen got dragged out, and the Gutter Runners have completely destroyed Oh, good. How did I miss this? The Flaming Skull has just gone through and destroyed the entire front line of the Skaven. There was barely... Oh, dear. I'm so sorry I missed that. That was ridiculously good. And suddenly, the centre belongs to the Empire. The Flagellants here are charging through. Oh, we've got some Warp Lightning dropping down there. Folkmar the Grim is helping in the centre of the Blazing Knights. As you can see, they're both there now to clean up the centre. And unfortunately, these guys have been swarmed by infantry and now again picked off. The, um... Yeah, the Handgunners are picking off the Lord there. Um... Yeah, it's all sorts of problems coming down now. And a banishment's just been dropped as well. Good grief. This, is, this flank's gone. The Skaven have lost it. And the centre here's gone. As you can see, the Plague Monks are trying to hope, but the Knights are now just running into the centre. And like the previous battle now, they're going to just run amok and destroy it. As they did with the Orcs, they're going to do it with the Skaven. As you can see, they've got into the mix of all of this. So the Warp Lightning Cannon and the Spears cannot do anything. The Lord, Warlord, is trying to get back. But as you see, this flank's gone. The Rattles are gone. Oh, and that was a miss as well. That was a waste of a warp lightning there. Could have made a bit of a difference. The Rattle is a rally, but there's just not enough here. I mean, if he, he's going to bring them back to help with the main fight. But as you can see, the, he's just got Skaven slaves mostly in um, skirmishes. And with the Knights of the Blazing Sun, he'll be able to run them down. The Warlord is chasing them down, getting a couple of kills there on the Blazing Knights. But Volkmar's not even taking any damage yet. He's just kind of riding around like, yeah, I own this place. It's all good. Um... As you see, the Skaven are now breaking on all fronts. And it looks like John Torn is going to bring this home. Because the Knights will eventually run those guys down. It's just a matter of time. I believe that's another Warp Lightning coming down. Yes, it is. Very good shot there. But as you can see, unfortunately, I mean, the Warp Lightning cannons have actually been left. Um, but as you can see, they own this flank now. The Rat Ogres are trying to get a pinch. But there's just too many people here. And that includes Spearmen. Those Spearmen and the Handgunners will just snipe them out. Take him out of there. There you go. Valkmar the Groom is now taking on the Warlord of the Bone Breaker. But he's never alone. Of course he isn't. So, he's followed by the Faithful there as they charge in and do all that down. Oh, and the Handgunners are now shooting at the Warlord. And this is not looking good. And this is not... There's, there's no front line anymore. You've got these guys trying to protect the Warp Lightning Cannons. But it's just not going to be enough. The Warlord's on half health. These guys are trying to do as much damage as they can. The Gutter Runners, as you can imagine, they do a pretty good job there. Um, 
But I don't, I don't think it's going to be enough. I mean, the Rat Ogres on this flank's gone. The Warlock Engineer's trying to hold it alone against um, the Sigma Suns. That's not going to... As you see, he's getting a charge into the rear of the Blazing Suns to try and break them. But as you can see, the crew's given up. The Gobbadier's given up. The These guys are trying to get some damage, but there's just too much for health. I mean, the Empire still have... 550 guys left. I mean, there's 700 scaven, but most of them are running. Oh, and the Warlord's gone. He has broken, and I suspect the rest of the caven, seeing their Warlord run away, would think it's not worth doing. Yeah, as you can see, the leadership's now plummeting on all the forces. The Empire own the field, and I believe that is a victory for John Torn there. Well played by both of them. Very good game there. So... Valkyrie the Grim got 36 kills, Bright Wizard got 57, Spearman got 12, the Swordsman, very disappointing actually, 4 1 and 1. I mean, one unit did get taken out at the start, to be fair, but the other two, they were up against slaves mostly and plague monks. You then got the Flagellants, look at this, 40 kills, 87 and 69, the Sigma Sons got 32, the Tatasos got 96. The free company with this, uh, as you can see, 9 and 3, but they didn't do that much fire. And they probably did a lot of support fire, and they were ready to get in when the ammunition ran out. And the Silver Bullets got 8, but the Knights of the Blazing Sun, 92 and 85. That's just, yeah, poor Skaven. <laughs> um, Delf plays, they've 26 kills on his Warlord, 12 on the Warlock Engineer, um, 16, 5, 10 and 13 on Skaven Slaves. That's respectable for Skaven Slaves. Um, the Plague Marks, 103 kills there and 43, very good. But the Death Runners didn't do so well, 34 and 11. The Slingers did practically nothing of 5 and 1. The Poison Wing um 15 and 12 kills. Then you got the Gutter Runners, 61 and 87 kills. They did amazingly well for them, but unfortunately too little to turn the tide of the battle. And the Rat Ogres, 21, 47. And the War Plotting kind of gone okay, 62 could have got a lot more, but there wasn't a good positioning for the Lightning Clan to be. So, unfortunately, the Lord of Socks didn't do much. So, that's it. All the battles have been fought. Let's go to the scoreboards and see what happened. So, as you can imagine, T John Torn is at the top now with four played... Well, I don't know what I'm saying played. They've all played four games. Sorry, so John Torn has won three games and only lost one. That secures his position at the top of the table and he is through to the semi-finals um feral war as you can see he won two and lost two but because he beat dalv plays and black iron battle he is second place so feral war is also in the semi-final unfortunately this does mean dalv plays and black iron battles even though they had two wins and two losses are not going through because Dalv did beat Black Iron, so he is on top of him. So he's in third place, Black Iron in fourth place, and as you can see, Psych is in last place but did get a win at the end. So well done to everyone. I'd like to thank all of you, the YouTubers, that have taken part. It's been an absolutely amazing experience doing this tournament, and of course. We're now in the semi-finals, but I'd just like to um say thank you to all those that the three that won't be going through. Um even when it didn't look great, you all played to your best and gave us amazing games to report on. So, of course, guys, don't forget to check out their channels. They all have um, YouTube channels and they all have the battles on their channels as well, all their videos. So, go check them out and subscribe. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe to Shadow Online Gaming, being, you know, the guy who organised it all and got it all run. I don't know how I've managed this, but it's absolutely brilliant. Um... And everyone has really enjoyed themselves. So go check out their channels. Subscribe to Sano Online Gaming. And of course don't forget to check out tomorrow. Because tomorrow we're having it all. The semi-finals and the final. So it's it's going to be tight. It's going to be good. So thank you all for joining me. I hope you do join me for tomorrow. For the finals of these games. And yeah. Get to finally crown a YouTuber. As the Mortal Empires Champion. Thank you very much for joining me. And I hope to see you next time. Till then. Take care.